Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So this is one of the other beds that was a part of that broken bundle that I got for $15. Now, this is a really great example of how sometimes you just have to tear the whole thing up to make it what you really want it to be. Now, there are some things in life you really can't change. You can't fix it. That's just the way it is. But when it comes to dollhouse furniture, especially a box of broken dollhouse furniture, you don't have to just accept it the way it is. Even break it if you have to. You can fix it. And when I say break it, I mean gently disassemble it. Try to salvage as much as you can. Don't be afraid to re-envision it and redesign it to fit your dollhouse scene. Now be advised this whole breakage recommendation only applies to mass-produced miniatures. Don't do this to one-of-a-kind artisan pieces or antiques. Now dolls, I definitely should have used a heat gun or a blow dryer to soften the glue to make the disassembly of the little bed easier and less destructive. But I really felt like I shouldn't have had this much of a problem pulling apart a mass-produced miniature bed with glue that was at least 30 years old. But clearly I was wrong. <laughs> so now that all the fabric is removed, you can see that the headboard of the bed is really lovely. And these are some of the pieces that were found in the bottom of the box. Now I finally detached the headboard from the frame and I'm lining up the bed post to make sure I line them up straight before I glue them back to the main part of the headboard. Now keep in mind I do have this lovely footboard I do need to consider as well. Now dolls, now that I have everything disassembled and I see the beautiful pieces I have to work with, I felt very inspired so inspired that I pulled out my dollhouse builder's scale ruler to see if maybe it can help me in this process. <laughs> now at this point, dolls, I really was trying to go back and forth in my mind whether I wanted to build a new bed frame or use the existing original bed frame and just reattach the headboard and footboard to that. I really wasn't confident that it was going to give the bed the look that I wanted, especially because of the way it was designed. It would make the mattress too high. And I was originally using the ruler and then I decided to use the dimensions of the old bed frame or foundation to create a new template. Now this is the foam that I normally like to use for my mattresses. And if I use the original foundation, the mattress will have to sit on top, which will make it too high. So the old bed foundation just doesn't give allowance for my one inch thick foam. Now dolls, I did split the mattress in the upcycled bed video. I will leave a link in the description so you can see that. So always be willing when making miniatures to modify, adapt, and adjust. So I went on to try to remove some of the layers of stain and shine that was on the original bed because I wanted it to look a little bit more vintage and I really didn't want to do a whole lot of sanding and get a lot of dust. Now dolls, this is not recommended at all. I'm actually pouring acetone directly onto the piece of furniture. Don't do this. This is not a good practice. Always practice safety and use nitrile gloves. Yeah, this really looks bad. Don't do this, doll. Now, I continued on rubbing the acetone on it to, like, got to a point where I could really see what the actual color of the wood was, and I really, really liked it. So I did sand it a little bit to get the rest of the lacquer off. There is also quite a bit of old glue on some of the pieces to the bed frame, and even though I thought it was salvageable, I still felt funny about using it with all that glunky glue on it. I really felt like I wanted a fresh start for this bed, just a whole clean slate. And although this bed frame is pretty sturdy, it was glued together pretty well. It really wasn't broken except for that small piece. And I thought maybe I'll just save it and put it in my scrap pile for something else. I finally concluded that I would go ahead and repair the old frame, but I'm not going to use it for this bed. Now, after looking at the bed frame and really determining the area I want to attach the frame to, and that would actually give me a more stable structure, I sorted through my wood pieces and scraps and found a piece that would be perfect for the area that I wanted to use. And I did use my new ruler to help make my cuts as accurate as possible. Now dolls, although I have my trusted ruler and I've been making miniatures for years, I still have a lot to learn. Everything I learned, I learned from books and kits and just trial and error from the tools and materials that daddy gave me. 
and whatever remnants, scraps, and trash I could glean as supplies. But now I have access to more materials and supplies and even tutorials from more skilled artists. So I want to remain open and teachable because there's always something new to learn. So no matter where you are in your miniature journey, always strive to make something that you're proud of that works well in your settings. Now, Dolls, I always want to encourage you to be careful and cautious anytime you're using saws or blades or anything like that because I don't want any of my dolls being injured. And although I'm not a professional, I want to show you how I make what I make. But above all, always practice safety. So now that I've cut my two pieces and I've sanded them with my new sandpaper, they're relatively even. I'm going to drive it across the sandpaper a little bit more and then glue it to the headboard and footboard. Now, dolls, as usual, I always dry fit, try fit to make sure everything lines up before I actually add my glue. And I really like the way that side rail is going to hit on the bed post. So let's go ahead and get this together. So here I am, dolls, adding sparing amounts of glue to both ends of the side rails. So in this frame, I'm using some one, two, three blocks plus leftover random pieces of granite to support my pieces as they dry in place. And as the pieces dried, I went on to try to determine how wide I needed for the slats to be the part that I needed to support the mattress. Now, if you can see dolls, the mattress is going to sit down in between the two side rails. It's a little bit different from the bed that I made where I upcycled the headboard. After I determined how wide the slats needed to be to fit in between my two side rails, I went on to cut two pieces. Now, generally, I would cut three pieces to be the slats to support my mattress, but because these pieces were a little bit wider, I just left it at the two slats. Now, dolls, when you're cutting the slats to go between the side rails for your bed, you definitely want it to be a tight, snug fit, but you don't want it to be so tight and taut that it causes the side rails to bow. You just want them to lay in between the two, flush against the side rails, but again, not to create any pressure. I was very pleased to realize that I do believe that using the ruler is helping me to get straighter cuts and neater, even pieces. So I'm really excited. I think this ruler is very special because it actually says Dial House Builder on it. I think that's what's really making the difference. <laughs> now that the two side rails are attached firmly to the headboard and the bed post, I can handle the bed with more liberty now. So dolls, I want to make a confession. This was the part of dollhouse building that always got me in trouble with daddy because I wanted to continue on with the build before the other parts were fully dry. Because at this stage, one false move and everything could all fall apart. So this is where I really struggle. So in this instance, I will say to you to do as I say and not as I do. Allow your pieces to dry completely before you begin to handle them so that you're not sorry in the end. So here I am adding glue to the other end of the side rail and I am attaching the footboard right on top of the side rail and allowing it to dry in place. Now I'm going to just let the video play because I want you dolls to actually see what I did. Now after I thought it was a little bit tacky as far as the glue catching, I did sit it in the natural position and allowed it to dry in the position that it would actually sit. Don't know if this was a good idea or not, but it's what I did dolls and it worked out really well. <laughs> Now, dolls, this is actually the next day I did allow the full structure of the bed frame to dry overnight before I began to add the slats. Now, dolls, this may sound silly, but I was really amused at how easily the slats went in between the side rails because I had measured properly. So it was really great. I just had to hold them in place for a second for the glue to catch, but it was really a nice, neat fit. And when I got done, I cleaned off the excess glue so that it would dry nice and smooth with no glue globs. Slowly but surely, dolls, I do believe that the counseling for excess glue use is actually taking effect. I am still in recovery. I will have relapses, but I do see signs of recovery. So I'm feeling very proud of myself right now. Here I am adding the glue to the second slat. Dolls, always check your fit before you add the glue. That's why I say try fit, dry fit. Because trying to sand something after it's a gluey mess is really hard. 
Now I want you to notice that with this slat, I put it on underneath to avoid getting glue on the side rails. Now I did hold it in for a few seconds just to make sure it took hold. So to distract myself and allow that to dry, I went on to make the mattress. Now dolls, I've made mattresses several times, but I just wanted to just give you a glimpse here that this mattress I made out of the sleeve of an old men's shirt. I thought it was a really nice stripe. I thought it was a good scale. So I just want you to know, you don't have to go through a lot of changes or spend a lot of money buying fabrics, that there are things right around you that you can use to complete your projects. Now I did fit the mattress in between the side rails now that it's dry. And I'm just taking a moment away to cut out a piece of board to be my foundation for my mattress because I don't make box springs. And then I just folded it onto the foam, just like a Christmas gift. Now, if you do want to see me make a mattress with more detail, I do have other videos linked in the description. Now, here is my dry bed. It's looking nice. Everything is solid. So before I go on to continue with my decoration, I do want to stain it so that all the wood is in a similar tone before I do my extra treatments. Now this is my Jacobean stain. It's by Verathane. And I really think that Jacobean color really picks up the same color and tones of the original stain on the bed. So dolls, as usual, I didn't have a full plan as to what I was going to do, but based on the shape of the headboard and just the general feeling I was getting from the bed, I thought it would look really cute with these lace kind of wooden scrolly designs that I got in a Christmas gift that I received. I will leave a link in the description from when I got this wonderful gift, but I'm just playing around with them to see how they'll look on my bed. Now, dolls, this is just another one of those instances where I feel like your creativity really blossoms in the midst of play. So I'm just playing around with the little wooden pieces to see how they'll look on the bed and how they coordinate with the lovely curves that are already on the headboard. Now, as I played around with the little wooden pieces, I'm sure you can see now that there are some little holes at the end of the headboard, which is where they were attached to the bed previously to the old bed frame. So let me go ahead and get my putty now so I can fill those holes. Now dolls, this is just some basic wood putty I'm pushing into those little nail holes so I have a smooth surface when I do my final paint treatment on the bed. Now after I felt like the holes were packed really nice, I wiped it down and cleaned up all the excess and then packed them again because sometimes the putty shrinks. Now after packing the putty and smoothing it out, I did sand the little areas again. So while playing with the positioning of the little wooden scrolly lace applique pieces, I found another little individual piece among those pieces and I thought it would be nice as a centerpiece on the headboard. So I kept that piece out as well. And after I was solid as to where I wanted to put the little lace pieces, I did a final inspection and checked the bed out to make sure there was no glue spills. I made sure all of the puttied areas were sanded down really smooth and wiped down. Now, dolls, I'm about to do something that I'm sure most of you are going to think is a really, really bad idea. So I went on to add my wood glue, my Gorilla Wood glue, to the little lace scrolly applique pieces to apply them to the bed. Now it seems like it would be most logical to paint the base of the bed whatever my special treatment color was before I added the appliques. Yeah, but that's not what I did dolls. I added the appliques first. Now I did take extra care using very sparing amounts of the glue to apply the appliques and I think that's what got me distracted trying to be very careful in how much glue I actually applied, forgetting about what I wanted to do for the final look. So in this frame, I'm clearly in the zone playing with the lace pieces and gluing them on. I really like how just adding these few little pieces are really giving the bed a whole different mood. Here I am hyper-focused on adding the glue to the little pieces. Now here I just glued my pieces and I actually found my little medallion. I do have a little glue oozing, but I am getting better. So I'm going to continue to heal and recover. And as a part of my counseling, I have learned that sometimes when glue doesn't stick, it's not because it's a lack of glue. 
it's a lack of preparing the surface the items are being glued to. <laughs> Guys, I'm really excited about that little piece that's painted gold. I think it's a really nice focal point for the headboard. Although I really like the look of the bed, it's by no means finished, but I'm really tickled at where it is at this stage. So let's go ahead and check out and see how well the mattress fits on the new frame with the new side rails and slats. Now, I really, really want to encourage you dolls that if you're trying to decorate a doll house on a budget, I don't want you to feel as though you have to have things that you're not happy with. If you buy something and it's broken or if you don't like it, you can change it. You can fix it. You can make it something you're really happy with. I'm here. I'm just showing you how I made alterations to the bed frame to allow room and space for my blankets and ruffles and bedding and things. So even though I had to repair it, I made it to suit what my desire for the bed was. And you can do that as well. I'm really happy with the little bed and I think the little mattress fits just perfectly snug in between the new bed frame. Now dolls, if you've enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments and also hit the notification bell so you'll know when I'm uploading a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, consider buying me a coffee. The link is in the description. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.